Okay, on this problem, we have a table of values, and they're in function notation. So in other words, we have x values going basically from 0 to 9, and this is their f of x values. In other words, the y values here. So when x is 0, y is 3. When x is 1, y is 0, and so on. And so basically, we just have some ordered pairs. You could plot them, graph them, and that sort of thing. So on this uh, part of this problem over here, it says, what is f of 2? So what we do here is we say when x is 2, what is the y value? That's what this means. f of 2 means when x is 2, what is the y value? Well, when x is 2, we get, use this table and go down to 2, and we see what the f of x value or y value is, and it's 7. So this value right here is 7. This one says if f of x equals 2, then what does x equal? Well, f of x means the y value here, so just looking for 2 in this column right here, you can see here's a 2, so the x is equal to 8. So this value here is 8. This says f inverse. This little negative 1 here is read inverse. So in other words, this means instead of going left to right, we're going right to left. So f inverse of 7. What we're doing here is looking for 7 on the right-hand side. Then, what is the x value over here that, that corresponds to that? Well, that would be 2, and that's what we get. Again, when you see the f inverse, that means we're starting on the right-hand side. Look for the 7. There's a 7. What's on the other side? A 2. Okay, f inverse of y equals 8. So this means if we take some value on the right-hand side, since it's an inverse, so right here on the uh, right-hand side, there is some value that goes over to the left-hand side of 8. So find 8 over here, and you can see that the value that we started off with is 2. So this is 2. Again, this one, staying with this one, it says f inverse, so we're going from right to left. What we end up with, it equals 8. So we're going to end up with 8. So what did we start off with? 2. Okay? Let's do the last one. You do this from the inside out. Work from the inside out. So f inverse of 7. So this means we're going from right to left. And we actually are given the value of 7 that we're looking for on the right-hand side. So if we do f inverse of 7, we end up with 2. So now we need to get f inverse of 2. So start with a 2 over here, and that takes you to 8. So the answer to this is 8. Okay, let's try uh, a new version of this problem. So here's my table. So I'll go through this one. It says, first one says, what is f of 7? So this is going from left to right. f of 7, when, when x is 7, we get 4. So this is going to be 4. f of x equals 6. So we're going to end up with 6. What value will end up with 6? 3. f inverse of 4. Well, in other words, we're starting on the right-hand side with 4. Where does that take us to on the left? 7. And the reason I knew I was starting on the right-hand side because it says inverse. In other words, we're going from this function back to where we started from. So f inverse of 4, find the 4 on the right-hand side, it takes you back to 7. Okay, the next one, f inverse of something. So there's something over here that goes over to 3. Well, Here's the 3 on the left-hand side, and the number that goes over to there is 6. So this value right here is 6. Now, f inverse of f inverse of 4, first do f inverse of 4. So f inverse of 4 gets me to 7, and then f inverse of 7 gets me to 8. So this value right here would be 8. And you can check these right here, 6 and 8. And that's how you do these.